Okay, so I want to spend some time talking about graphs and physics as well. So the three types of graphs I have pulled up here are a position time graph, a velocity time graph, and an acceleration time graph. And I want to model on the graphs uh, the motion of a ball being thrown up and then falling back down. And so first, that's what our position time graph is going to look like. So we throw the ball up and I'm going to throw the ball down. So some things to note about this curve. This curve is kind of in a parabolic arch because as it comes to the top, as the time goes on, its position is going to change less because as we know when we throw an object up, it goes up and then it slows down and then it starts to fall back down again. So this is it falling up, or it's going up, 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 and then slowing down and then it stops for a second and then it falls back down to where it started. On a velocity time graph, this is going to look something like this a straight line down because we start with an initial positive velocity that is very high and then it's going to decrease to zero and it's at this point right here that we have our change in direction and it's this change in this this point where it crosses the x-axis is the change in direction I made a mistake on the test to where if the velocity does this in the air it did not change direction it just sped, it just changed the rate at which it was going up. So if I'm going fast and then slower and then fast and then slower, I'm still increasing speed and going in a positive velocity, but just at different rates and changing the rate at which I go in a positive velocity. But it's when the velocity changes direction and crosses this x-axis of time that it changes direction because I'm going up here in a positive velocity and then I'm falling in a negative velocity. And that negative sign is going to indicate a change. And with all these graphs, we're thinking about a physics on a one-dimensional level. And so if I have a positive, if this is zero, if I have a positive velocity, I'm moving this way. And if I have a negative velocity, I'm moving this way. So the only way for me to move this way is for me to have a negative velocity. But it also can be said that as if I have a negative slope here as well, I want to look at the slope of the velocity. I can have a negative velocity. I've changed from here. But if I just have a big velocity compared to a smaller velocity, that's what this is showing here. This is showing the large arrow. This is showing the small arrow. But they're still positive compared to the x-axis. We only get this negative velocity when coming down and we cross this x-axis here. I also want to take a look at an acceleration time graph. So this acceleration time graph is going to look like this. And it more properly look like this. Actually, if we drew a line below the x-axis at negative 9.80 meters per second, if we're talking about the acceleration from gravity. And that's because when I throw the ball up, the after my hand releases from it, the only acceleration or force that's asked acting on the mass is going to be the force from gravity and this is a constant force but because the velocities we have on the way up so on the way up the ball has a positive velocity indicated here on the graph and but then on the way in a negative acceleration and so when velocity is positive and acceleration is negative here we're going to have a ch change in sp we're going to have the object is going to be slowing down. But then on the flip side, when uh, the ball starts to fall again, I'm going to have a negative velocity because I'm falling. This negative velocity, this is the position going back to zero. Acceleration stays the same the whole time. But this negative velocity, this velocity moving back towards the reference point, if you will, with that negative acceleration from gravity, which has always been the same, in this instance, here we're going to get the object speeding up. And it's in this, and this happens, this slowing down, change directions at this point, and speeding up again. This is what we can see on the velocity time graph. Some other interesting things I want to note about these graphs are is that this graph, the derivative of this graph is this graph. And we, if we take a look at it, we can see that. And so I start out with a very high velocity if I use my pen as a tangent line here. And this is kind of getting into some calculus. But then as I rise to the apex of the position time graph, it flattens out to zero. And it's this zero point, this, this relative maximum, if you will, that is this point on the velocity time graph. 
because the velocity here is zero, the slope of the tangent line is zero. And then the slope of the tangent line becomes negative, which is where we have these negative velocities represented here as well. And then the acceleration, this is constant because if we take the derivative of any point on this line, it's going to be negative at the slope of negative 9.8 meters per second. And in reality, this, slo this slope of this line should equal my acceleration. Same with this line. The instantaneous slope is going to equal your velocity. And how do we know this? Because if slope, right, is the change in x, or the change in y over the change in x, well, my y is meters, and my x is t time. And meters per second is what we measure velocity in, and that's where that comes into as well. And so those are some things to know about it. There's one more trick about the graphs that I may explain, explain briefly here. I can do it. And that is, what does this area represent? And the area under this tri in this triangle here is going to actually equal my displacement, so m. And so if we remember, the area of a triangle here is 1 half base times height. And so if I look at this base times height, my base is going to be the time it took me to cover that. And then my height is going to be measured in meters per second. Time is measured in seconds. And then it's multiplied by 1 half for this triangle area. But if I just do the dimensional analysis and cross out the seconds, I see that I get meters, my distance traveled. And we know this is true because where the velocity graph ends, if I shade this in, these two areas are going to be equal and cancel each other out. And the reason that is, is because the ball over here in the position time graph returned to the same spot. So that's some information about a velocity time graph and a falling object.